you a bit of a lad? Do you consider yourself to be the professor when betting? And have you put your smart money on with Coral? These are stereotypes and targeting that Labrokes Coral use in their advertising in particular, and of course, the chance to win lots of money. Maybe you're a dreamer, a glory seeker, a back page philosopher, a Wednesday night warrior, or a have a go hero on a Saturday afternoon. Or maybe it's time that you wised up because this is the Labrokes life, exposing several shocking truths about Labrokes Coral that they don't want you to see. Inspired by an article that was in the news earlier in the week where four individuals were sentenced for defrauding Labrokes Coral betting shops for more than £600,000. They'd done it by placing bets on the automated betting terminals inside the shops, depositing a note into the machine and then using a plastic lead to pull it back out once the machine had registered the deposit. Something that I certainly couldn't condone isn't right and is certainly wrong. You might say that they were changing the terms of the bet after it had initially been placed which is what drew my attention to this article and made me laugh a little bit because Labrokes are renowned for doing exactly the same thing in a roundabout kind of way. For example, you place your bet with Labrokes and then they turn around and withdraw the best odds guaranteed. They take away promotional bonuses. They tell you that the odds are a palpable error and therefore it needs to be changed. Or in some instances, they even cancel the bet altogether. Although they don't offer you the chance to take your money back once the bet has already been placed. Maybe somebody at Labrokes should also be looking at a little bit of sentencing in the near future too. But it gets worse because recently there's also been issues online where people have announced that Labrokes have changed the terms of their bets after they've been placed because they own a grid card. For anybody that doesn't know what a grid card is, it's like a bonus card, uh, an offers card that incentivizes you to come back as a customer inside the betting shops. What they're doing though is taking your data and information when you register for one of these grid cards, linking it to your online betting account. So if you face betting restrictions because you are a winner or somebody who has previously taken promotional materials from Labrokes Coral, they are then restricting you in shop after you've placed a bet. I mean, just look at this instance online where somebody has placed bets in the shop in the knowledge that they had a grid card, that the bet was accepted, they have a bet ID, and then later, once the bet has won, Labrokes turn around and say that you cannot have your winnings because your online account is restricted. Presumably, Labrokes, being a responsible operator that they are, would refund that money to anybody who is in that same situation where the bet didn't win, wouldn't they? <laughs> To add insult to injury, there's an ongoing gambling review where betting operators like Labrokes or GVC and Coral, who own Labrokes Coral, are claiming that they have problems identifying problem gamblers, although they clearly don't have problems identifying winning gamblers. I mean, just look at this article online where they took eight years to identify somebody who had a problem addiction. Which leads me on nicely to the latest developments around single customer view. Now, some people may not be aware what that is watching this video, so very quickly, single customer view is something that's being put forward by the UK Gambling Commission and MPs in Parliament to empower bookmakers and allow them to have your data across multiple platforms. Meaning if you deposit with Labrokes, then William Hill, Bet365, many other operators will also know. This is supposed to be used to target problem gamblers, although I think it's highly likely companies like Labrokes are gonna be using it to link up with their grid card system so they can actually limit customers who actually take money from them, use their promotional materials, and let the problem carry on as usual. An interesting point on this is Andrew Rose, the CEO of the Gambling Commission recently said in the Racing Post that if betting operators abused affordability checks and this kind of system, then the Gambling Commission would step in and take action. Something I'm sure he regrets right now because it's been happening for over 10 years and we're still waiting. Labrokes State restricted my account and refused my bets many years ago, so it's old news for me, as it will be for many people that also follow this channel. If you don't understand how you can beat a bookmaker, check out this link in the top of the screen here, or also in the description down below. But the point is very clear and simple. This is not about identification, it's about integrity. You only have to look at the news once more. Labrokes in the past have wooed problem gamblers to spend more money on their platform, and then when things go wrong, they wanna pay them out of court, have an out of court settlement, and stop it from appearing in 
inside the media. I mean, we have to ask ourselves here, is this really a good idea to give these companies more data and allow them to share it between multiple different platforms? And also, is the Gambling Commission even doing their job? After all, one of their main lines is to make sure that gambling is fair and open. Right now, they don't appear to be representing consumers as they should be, neither does Chris Phillips, one of the MPs who is endorsing the single customer view with the Information Commissioner's Office earlier in the month. In the past, looking at more news articles, it appears that MPs have been incentivized and asked for advice in terms of gambling laws as reviews are coming up so that they can get their way. Here's just an example where GVC paid one MP £50,000 on the months leading up to a gambling review. But if you think that's bad, you need to see this video here in the end screen about Skybet, which was released on the channel earlier in the month. It's a real eye-opener. It's a broader problem that's happening across multiple platforms right now. Many other betting companies are also using tactics like this where it's extremely easy to click and deposit in seconds without any identification then when it comes to withdrawing your money you can expect to wait weeks fill out lots of different paperwork and make it extremely awkward these betting companies are using regulation against the consumers that it is there to protect and in my opinion no better than those four individuals that were prosecuted earlier in the week